Good morning, boys and girls. It's good to see you again this morning. I um, hope you had a really good week, and we are going to pick up today where we left off last week, and we are picking up with 1 Kings, verse 18. When we left off last week, we were talking about Elijah. Remember, Elijah was a prophet. He heard God speak to him, sometimes through dreams, sometimes through other people, sometimes God just spoke to him. And he would tell others what God said and what God expected of them and what was going to happen in their lives, different things that uh, the people wouldn't know without Elijah telling them. Well, we left Elijah living in, the t in a small town with a widow that God had sent him to. Remember, she hey, he got there and he God said, you go in, you tell her and make me a meal. And he went, he said, make me bread, please. And, and he got water from her. And she said, no, I just have enough flour for myself and my young son. And I'm going home, going to make us a meal. And then we're going to lay down and die because we have nothing left. Elijah said, you make my bread first. Then you make your own and your son's bread. You eat that and you will see that the flour will never, never be empty. And she did it. She did just what he said. And guess what? Her flour jar was never empty. She now wasn't overflowing. She didn't have cabinets and jars full of flour and oil. But the oil and the flour both were always full, those two jars. So she always had food. Now, as we left him, remember he had been there for quite a while. And he was actually, he had been there for three years. And remember, before he left, one of the reasons he left was he had to get out of town. Because Ahab and his wife Jezebel had taken it upon themselves to start killing off all of God's prophets. Remember, Jezebel had been from another country and she worshipped Baal. And Ahab allowed her to bring Baal into Israel. And they were worshipping many gods other than our true God, the God that we know, the God. So I um, remember he had told them you were going to have many years, there's going to be a lot of time where there's not going to be any rain. Well, he had to be beat out of town really quick. And now we find out he's been gone for three years. Now, not a drop of rain has fallen in Israel. and It's been three years. I shudder to think about that. Imagine what it would look like around here if we had not had a drop of rain for three years. We didn't have it for six weeks in the summer. The leaves were falling off the trees. The grass was dried up. Every the ground was just crumbling and dusty. Imagine three years. So now in this whole area where they've had this drought, the people are hungry. There's no food. So let's find out what happened. So, like you said, we're now at the beginning of 1 Kings 18. A message comes to Elijah from the Lord. He told Elijah he needs to go and speak to Ahab. Then he, God, would send the rain. So Elijah got up to go speak to Ahab. The Bible states it very plainly. God spoke. He told Elijah what to do. And guess what? He did it. He didn't hesitate. He didn't say, but Lord, remember, they're killing all the prophets. You're going to send me back in there? He didn't. He did not. He did not have an issue. He said he, he just got up and he went. No arguing. We can't even get it. We can't even get up off our, our own couches when mom says, go clean your room, go do this, go do that, where someone needs us. Oh, man, here we go again. And here Elijah's put, going back into an area he knows where there are people who want to kill him. And he just gets up and he goes, well, we're going to add another man into the mix now. And his name is Obadiah. Obadiah worked for Ahab. And he loved, he loved the Lord. Apparently, he didn't let Ahab know that because he might not have been around too much longer if he had. And he himself, Obadiah, had hidden a hundred prophets in two different caves. They had to be some pretty big caves. And he gave them food and water, and he kept them alive in there. Now, at this time, the people, like I said, they didn't have any food. This drought is going on. It's been three years and Ob o o Ahab goes to Obadiah and he says, listen, I need your help. We need to go and travel around the area here, find grass to give to the donkeys and the animals. We need to keep them alive. Otherwise, we're going to have to kill the animals off. I have nothing left to feed them. So they go in two different directions. And Obadiah runs into Elijah. And he recognizes him. He recognizes Elijah. And he falls down on the ground on his face. And he says, 
Oh, Master, is that you? Well, he loved Elijah. And he understood when, when he bowed down to him that he knew he was a prophet of God. He knew he was part of God. And so Elijah told Obadiah, go tell your master, Ahab, that Elijah is here and I want to see him. Obadiah. Now, remember Elijah's reaction to God when he says, go talk to Ahab was, okay, go talk to him. Now, Elijah asks Obadiah to go and tell Ahab, I'm here. I want to see him. And Obadiah's like, what? You want to get me killed? We've been looking for you for three years. He's been trying to find you for three years. He's made everybody promise that he didn't, we didn't know where you were. He made everybody promise that if we found you, that we would tell him. And now you want me to just go up to him and say, Elijah was, is here and he wants to see you. He's probably going to kill me. And he says, go. Go and do it. And he did. He went and he told him. So he went and told him. And Ahab comes back to where Elijah is. And he says, oh, you are a troublemaker. You are a troublemaker for all of Israel. And Elijah says, I'm not the troublemaker. You and Jezebel are. Now go, go get all your prophets, 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Azra both of which are false gods, and everyone, everyone of Israel, all the prophets, meet me at Mount Caramel. Then all the people of Israel, and all the prophets of the false gods, Baal and Asherah, they do. They show up, and they meet him on Mount Caramel. And they took two bulls that were going to be sacrificed. Elijah, one man, got one bull, and 850 prophets had another bull. And they built their their altar. They prepared the bull. They had it ready. Elijah said, just don't light the fire. So they did all the work. And Elijah said, now, ask your God Baal to start the fire. So the prophets of the false gods of Baal began early in the morning until noon. They shouted and they cried to the God to start the fire, asking Baal, start the fire, start the fire. And nothing happened. Crickets, nothing, no answer. No, nothing from them. They began to dance around the altar. And at noon, Elijah, I guess, feeling a little bit good about himself. He, he he began to taunt them. And he shouted at them, shout louder, shout louder. Surely Baal is God. Surely he must be busy. He must have taken a walk. He must be busy. Maybe he took a nap. But shout louder. I'm sure you can get his attention. And they began to shout louder. And they began to cut themselves. And the tradition of cutting themselves was to kind of get Baal's attention, they thought. They thought that they could do that. That remember, Baal is not a real god. Baal's not there. This is in their heads. And they're thinking they're going to get his attention that way. Well, they did this all day long. And guess what? Again, crickets, nothing. Not nothing, nothing from the god. Not a little spark. Nothing from Baal because he's not a god. Well, Elijah called them to him. And he had to repair his altar. It had been broken up. Well, he fixed it and put 12 stones on it, one for each tribe of Israel from the descending, when they descended from Jacob, remember the 12 sons, 12 tribes. He prepared the bowl and he had the other prophets pour big containers of water on everything and soak it. And then he said, do it again. And then do it again. So now everything is soaking wet. The bull is wet. The rocks are wet. The dirt is wet. The wood is wet. So much water is being poured on there that is running down a ditch away from the altar. Everything. Just think of those pouring rains we've had. Go outside and you're wet from head to toe. These things, everything is soaked. Elijah then began to pray. He said, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. You are God. Start this fire. Well, guess what? The fire of the Lord fell from heaven onto the altar and the bull, and it burned up the sacrifice. That soaking wet 
sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the soil, and even the water that had started to make that trench away from the altar was burned up in the, in the water, in the fire. The people saw this. They fell down on the ground and they cried, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Elijah then said, grab those false prophets. And they did. And they took them down to the Kishon Valley and had them all killed. Elijah told Ahab to go eat and drink. And then he climbed to the top of Mount Caramel and he waited for that rain to begin. Meanwhile, the clouds began to grow very black. The wind began to blow. And then the rain, the heavy rain, began to fall on that parched, dry ground. And the power of the Lord came on Elijah. And this, and at this time, Ahab took off riding to Jezreel. And Elijah began to run ahead of Ahab all the way to Jezreel. We're going to stop right there. We're going to find out more of what happened next week. And we are going to begin with 1 Kings, verse 19 next week. But first, I want to talk about a couple of things that we can learn from 1 Kings 18. Sometimes it's one man against the world. Think about what Elijah was going through. Think about the running, the hiding. God had to tell him, get out of town because they knew what was going to happen. Have you ever had a situation where it just felt like everything was against you? That maybe all your friends weren't talking to you. Maybe you said something or they thought you said something, but it seemed like the whole world. Well, God sent Elijah back into a situation where a bunch of other people who did the same thing he did had been killed, and he did it. All of Israel had turned against God. Does that sound familiar? It is happening today again. Some people have turned completely away from God. They don't believe God exists. They don't believe in what God does. Others only look to God when they have time. They want God when they have time and they want him in their lives. Like a Sunday God. We tend to take him and put him back in that little box when we don't need him. Don't want him to be going out shopping with us in case we get an attitude with somebody. Don't want him... When we're dealing with mom and dad or grandma and grandpa or our teachers and they ask us to do something, we don't want to do it. And we have that attitude. We don't want God in that situation. So we put him in that little box and we put him away. Well, boys and girls, God is in every situation that you're in. Everything, no matter what it is. And you've got to remember that. Elijah challenged people to stop going between God and Baal. We have Baals in our lives. And it's it's what we make more important than God. We get up on Sunday morning. Is it always church? Or is it, I've got something else to do today. I have a game to play, sports or friends or video games. We stay up late. Can't get up early on Sunday morning because we played, watch TV too late. We played video games too late. Honey, those are your bails. If, if that's what we're doing, things instead of God, instead of praying, instead of reading, instead of getting this good book out, if we are doing other things more important, now I'm not saying we can't do all those other things. I'm just saying this should come first. And then we do the other things. For them. Those other things are our false gods. And they can make you feel really good at the moment. But they kind of give you false hopes. Staying up late, playing those games, or, or, or going out on Sunday morning and playing a sports game. You know, it feels good to do it. it feels good. But boys and girls, that is not what God wants of us. And as we get older, we need to remember to allow God to always be first in our lives. If God is placed first, everything else will fall in line behind him. And it, believe me, boys and girls, it does work. I know it does. And I want you to know it does. We're going to stop here and we're going to pray. And then um, let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, you are a good God. We thank you for the rain that you bring to us. We thank you for the sunshine, the warmth, 
Lord, we thank you for this beautiful fall season that you're bringing before us. The coolness of the air, the changing of the leaves as they begin. Lord, uh, I can just imagine you up there with your paint easel and just loving the colors that you place before us. That we should love them as much as you do. Lord, that we are thankful for your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask for forgiveness where we place bales in front of you that we place false gods, that we place other things in place of you. Lord, we thank you for all the children. Lord, we thank you for all their hearts. Lord, we thank you for the parents who allow us to talk to them and teach them. Lord, most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus. In his wonderful name we do pray. Amen. Boys and girls, I hope to see you again next week. Hope you have a great week. And remember, God, I love you. Goodbye.